like most people nowadays, I'm always on the run. So when I have a little free time, I like to cook up some exciting, delicious, wonderful dishes to keep it on hand. Many of the Asian dishes really lend themselves to reheating. That means you can cook ahead of time. In fact, they often taste even better the second time around. Here is a wonderful example. I call it three cup drumstick. Three cups drumstick, okay? Not one cup, not two cups, oh, three cups. Now to get the drumstick, of course, you can buy the drumstick in the supermarket. You don't have to do it yourself. But I love to do it myself. And I always like to buy the whole chicken because it's a lot less expensive. And then I would do my whole chicken and I cut the whole chicken myself. Now I would like to show you how to cut up a chicken, okay? Everybody know when you buy a whole chicken, huh? sit. <laughs> I want to show you how to bone a chicken. Now everybody know you need, first you need a sharp knife. But even if you have a sharp knife, you got to make sure, just like I have been telling everybody all this year, the chicken have to be totally relaxed before you can do the chicken. So make sure the chicken has to be Huh? <laughs> I want to show you how easy it is and how fat is it to bone the chicken, okay? Now I want all of you to time it at home, particularly you in the studio. I want a few official timer. I am going to bone this chicken, remove all these parts from the carcass in 24 seconds or less. Otherwise, I'll cook your dinner tonight. <laughs> when I say three, two, one, you time it, okay? Are you ready at home and the studio? You ready? Yeah. 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 When I say three, two, one, when I say one, you time it. Three, two, one. This is the thigh, and then turn it to the other side. This jaundice, push this whole thing out. And then the thigh, and then the last piece on this side is the tender. This is done. How many seconds? I hope. Now, just in case some of you missed it, okay? I'm going to do it slow motion. How many seconds I actually did it? Anybody know? 20. 20. <laughs> I am impressed. I to do this presentation, I stay up all night last night. I did 24 chickens last night. <laughs> night. Now I want to show you slow motion so everybody can learn. This is a Chinese bowling knife. This is the wishbone, the breastbone. I'm going to have one cut on one side of the breastbone. Okay, this is the breastbone. One cut here, one cut there, one cut. See, sharp knife. Another cut. Then turn it upside down. Graciously. And then one cut <laughs> along the back, right here from here to here. But you stop right over here because you do not want to cause any damage, even the slightest damage to this most delicate part of the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> one cut long right here. Stop. Otherwise, you ruin this. I'm going to save enough of these to make a dish called chicken surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and then I hold on to this. You see, I use my finger to feel where the joint is. And I disjoin this. I immediately pull the whole chicken breast out like that. Look at that. The whole chicken breast comes out. Very simple. Now I put it right here. And then the next step is to remove the thigh and the leg. And I twist this. But there is a little piece of walnut-sized chicken here. And I use the tip of my knife, and I go like that, and the whole piece comes out. And the whole thing comes out, like that. See that? And then the last piece is this piece of tenderon right here. And I hold on to this, and I go like that, and I can actually remove the whole thing like that. The whole thing comes out. And then I turn it to the other side. I do it exactly the same way. I hold on to this, and I pull this out like that, and the whole chicken breast comes out. And then I hold on to this, and I disjoin this, and the whole thing comes out like this. And then the last piece is this tenderon. And I hold on to this, and I go like that, and the whole thing comes out like this. And then save this for homemade soup stock. Don't ever waste it. And then 
The next thing I want to show you is how easy it is to get the drumstick. All you have to do is to get the drumstick out like this. Follow the contour and hold on to this and juggles around and the whole thing comes out. And this is how easy it is for you to actually bone a chicken. Now, when I bone the chicken, when you cut raw chicken, everybody have to remember, you got to be safe. You got to learn all of these safety rules because never, never, you never defrost chicken on the counter. You should always defrost in the refrigerator or under cold water. And not only that, you can also defrost it in microwave. Don't just let it sit there at room temperature and avoid cross-contamination. Always remember, wash your cutting board and your knife immediately and your hand. So this way, there's no cross-contamination, okay? Make sure, wash with soapy water. And this way, since we're doing a show here, so I want to show you, we actually use another cutting board on top so we do not, and another brand new tower to clean everything up so there's no cross contamination. This particular dish is very easy to do. All I have to do is heat up my wok, and I use a tiny bit of oil, and I quickly brown this, okay? Three cup chicken, brown this. Look at this, brown one, two, three, four pieces. Brown this. It doesn't take too long to brown. Now if you want it to be browner, all you have to do is quickly marinate it with a little bit of dark soy sauce. Toss the drumstick, actually, playing drums. <laughs> and then why do you call three cups? The original recipe is three cups is one cup of Shaoxing wine. Wow. One cup of soy sauce. And one cup of sesame seed oil. Okay? But instead of using one cup of sesame seed oil, I use homemade soup stock. Okay? And I use a tiny bit of sesame seed oil. Rather than one cup, I use about two tablespoons. Now, to make it even more tasty, I add some green onion and I add some ginger. I have a knife here. I'm going to cut up some ginger. Okay, let's cut it up. I have some ginger here. I go like that, and I go like that, and I go like that, and I put it right here. <laughs> and to make it more exciting, I also put some garlic. When you brown your drumstick, you can brown it with garlic and ginger first, but sometimes you do that, it burns, okay? I have some chili pepper, hot and also have some rock sugar. Now, this rock sugar come like this. It's pretty big, okay? So if it's too big, all you have to do is... Big piece, small piece, it doesn't matter. I have small piece and save the big piece for tomorrow. And then all you have to do it is turn it down to low, okay? And let it simmer. Let it braise like a stew for approximately 20 minutes. Very low heat, 18 to 20 minutes. Cover this up, okay? And you are ready because it doesn't take too long to cook. Always clean up. And then when it's done, all you have to do is pick out your three cup chicken. You can do the whole chicken. You can do half a chicken. You can do wings. You can do drumstick. You can do anything you want. I really don't care what you do. <laughs> Just do it and enjoy. And once again, three cup chicken drumstick. <laughs> now, let me show you how to make a very hearty fish stew. They came through Vietnam by way of France. They called it Vietnamese bouillabaisse. It's very easy to do. Here, I have some pot with some broth. I'm gonna mix some broth first. All I have to do is to get the broth ready. Without the broth, there's no bouillabaisse. <laughs> Lemongrass, I cut this off. This is too fibrous. And I cut the tip off once again, and I cut this into sections. And I go like that, press this. Have a good time. Some garlic, shallot, onion, and jalapeno chili. Then we're gonna make the sauce, okay? 
we'll put a teeny tiny bit of, ah, use olive oil, huh? This is French stuff. Tiny bit of olive oil, and make sure the stove is hot, not the wrong burner. And then put the, uh, you, can, you can put this in later, okay? This is lemongrass. Garlic, chopped garlic, shallot, chopped shallot, and also onion, toss, and also chili, sliced chili. Toss them around, okay. Toss them, get the flavor out. And then you use, oh, look at that. We have some, mmm, clam juice. Look at that. Clam juice, really nice base. Recycle this. <laughs> Fish sauce. Not much. Some white wine. Okay. And stir it, stir it. And then, while it brings to a boil, get the flavor out, you are getting ready to put. Look at this, all the thing I have. I have fish, white fish, shrimp, and I also have some clam. And I'm gonna put some fish here and let it cook. And I put some prawn, which is already, I wanna show you, one of the way to do it is, everybody can see. I can actually cut it up like this, okay? Open it up like this. This way it's easier to cook and also looks nicer. If you don't have time, huh, no problem. Just put it in <laughs> and put some clam. Put some clam. Now everybody know, when you use clam, make sure you scrub it and clean it up because they got some sand on the surface. And the clam, when it's live clam, when it's cooked, it should open up. If it doesn't open up, don't bother. That's that clam. <laughs> Cover up, simmer it for a little while. In the meantime, we are ready to show you the rest of the ingredient you gotta do. Look at this. We're gonna open this up. Oh, look at that. We have been cooking another big portion here. We have clam, we have all of these, and anything that all, they all open up like this. Look beautiful. That means this good live clam. There's no dead clam here. We pick it. It took me four hours to pick all these clam for you. <laughs> right before you serve, we put the tomato, chopped tomato. Oh, this gives color and sweetness to it. And I love tomato, the whole thing. Green onion. Ah, oh, look at that chopped green onion. This is beautiful. And then some mint. Oh, chopped mint. This is gonna be a beautiful dish. And also basil. Oh, look at that. When it's all done, I can smell it already. It is so good. And I am gonna try this myself. And get a big bowl because I love this. I have some extra mint, extra Thai basil. And we are going to serve. Shut this off first. We are gonna serve right of these. Oh, this is my favorite. You can serve with rice, with noodle, with spaghetti, anything you want. And the choice is yours. This is a great cook ahead dish. You know why? Because in a two sense, you can cook this ahead and keep it warm or just put in the fridge. And when you are ready, you can just serve it. Right before you serve, put some extra mint and basil on both sides. Look at how beautiful. Fresh seafood is very, very important in Chinese cuisine. And when they say fresh, they're not kidding. Let me show you what fresh seafood means in Hong Kong. Chinese don't just enjoy the seafood with wine. We enjoy it in wine too. Case in point, drunken shrimp. Now he adds this 96 proof rose wine with a few aromatic spices. The shrimp are actually getting intoxicated in this liquor. I guess if you have to go, this is in a bad way. Who says Chinese are not into from Bay? Meet these three from Bay brothers. 
They specialize in synchronized fanbe. Why three? Well, I have a healthy appetite. Don't I? Mmm, it looks great. Wow, they cooked the whole shrimp, head and all. That's what I call cooking a head. In Southeast Asia, curries are one of the mainstays of cook ahead cuisines because a lot of dishes they use curry. Here's a recipe from Thailand for curry lamb with spicy long beans. It's very easy to do and it's delicious. And you can cook ahead and freeze them. Okay, it's wonderful. Now, here to get ready to save time, I'm gonna heat up my pot. In the meantime, I'm gonna show you all the spices I'm gonna use first. This is what makes it exciting. I have some brown sugar, shallot, ginger, lemongrass chopped, garlic chopped, clove, ground clove, and a tiny bit of ground cinnamon, and of course, spicy, dry chili, crushed, okay? And then you put them all together in a food processor, in a blender, put it on, make it into a paste, and it would look like this. This is a nice paste, okay? If you want, you can put a tiny bit of fish sauce to add to it to make it nice and easier to do. When this is ready, I am gonna brown this and get the flavor out from this wonderful pot. Put a teeny tiny bit of oil, okay? Not much. And you put this in. Wow! I didn't expect fire. Oh, look at that. You know, this is a very good practice. If it gets too hot, you can, just in case you cannot see yourself across the pot, you remove it. It's no big deal. Now we'll see. Or you can put it on the side like that, okay? And then we're gonna get the, ready the lamb. I cut the lamb into little chunks like this. This is a lean lamb. You can use beef, you can use pork, you can use a lot of things. And then I'm gonna also brown the lamb. We'll put this back right here and brown it. Lean lamb. You notice that I do not use too much. Okay. Stir, stir, brown. Move them around. Oh, look at how functional. And I can smell the aroma. And I hope you do that at home. John, can you smell it at home? <sighs> it's good. <laughs> and Elizabeth said, it is good too. Elizabeth, call John up and tell John it's marvelous. <laughs> Stir. Okay, and then you turn it down and you're ready. When it's almost ready, you add some fish sauce or soy sauce. You add some wonderful coconut milk. Oh, look at that. And then, if you want, you can add a tiny bit of water, extra water. And then you put some water here. And of course, in the last minute, when last two or three minutes, when the lamb is done, okay? Cook it very low heat, let it simmer, let it braise, okay? Put some purple onion, chop, and also yak long bean. Look at this yak long bean, okay? This is this long, okay? If you want it longer, stretch it. <laughs> Cut it into half an inch or so. I am serious. It started out this long, and then red bell pepper, and you just cover up and let it go. When this is done, you cover this up. Always remember, this is safety. Never, never lift up a lid. Even though you don't really, really know whether it is hot or not, always do it like that. See, it's very hot. When it's done, you shut it off, and then you can scoop it out. And I'm telling you, this dish is unbelievable. Make sure to hold on to this. And this is marvelous, because the long bit is so long, you can actually twist this and tie it in the knot. This is unbelievable. The great thing about this is, this is actually like a one-dish meal. And also, you can cook ahead. That's why today, everything we do is plan. Yan can plan. 
If Yang can plan, uh, you can plan. If Yang cannot plan those dishes, uh, don't even bother. <laughs> that means it's ridiculously complicated. It's beautiful lamb. <laughs> Finally, a dish that practically cooks itself, Chinese style black bean spare rib. Big and often, I also call it often big black bean spare rib. All I need is some onion, and we cut out the onion. <laughs> Hop, done. Put the onion right here. Lay them on the bottom of this pan, okay, baking pan. And then you get ready. If you have more onion, uh, put more onion. I love onion, good stuff. And then you make a sauce, the black bean sauce. Here, I have some Salted black bean, it looks like this salted black bean. You gotta rinse it in water. So I have rinse it, and you have some garlic and brown sugar and wine. You mix them all together. Put some wine, okay? Shaoxing wine, rice wine, some brown sugar, and some garlic, and some already soaked black bean. Now if you don't want to bother this, you can go to the store and buy a jar, it's already in a paste brown bean or black bean paste already mixed. Mix them all up. You want more? More. You want more? More. And then you can use back rib, you can use spare rib, you can use country rib. Okay, this is regular rib. And I lay them all here. Okay, and I lay another one here. Okay, and then we put the sauce right on top. Right on top, all of them. And then you cover the whole thing up and you bake it, okay? Let me show you. Cover the whole thing up, break this, bake this, wrap this all up, and then you rush to your oven. You have no time to waste, <laughs> even though you cook ahead. And you put it over here, and ah, so fast when you cook ahead. <laughs> when you cook ahead, it's fast. That's why you cook ahead, because it's fast. <laughs> And then when you open it up, it looks beautiful. And I am telling you, we are going to serve these, and it is unbelievable. We put the whole piece of this. If I can get this out, this is so good. Look at this, it's nice and hot, okay? And in fact, you can use a scissor to cut it up a little bit. And you cut it, so you have two pieces. Put together, look at that. And then you use the plain juice, skim the fat off, and then you heat it up again. That means when you are cooking ahead, you just put the pan juice right on top. It isn't marvelous. <laughs> With a little planning, you can enjoy wonderful meals all week long. Prepare something ahead of time and serve them whenever you are too busy to cook. Till next time, think ahead. If Yen can plan, so can you. Judge Yen.